is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. What we're going to cover today is one very important question that I get asked a lot. And the question is simply this. Hey John, what is the best way to store the juice? Like, you know, if I want to drink juice at my work and I got to, you know, go to work at 6 a.m., you know, or I got to be on the, on the road, you know, for several days and I want to take bottled juices with me. What's the best way to store it? Well, pretty much I could sum it up in one sentence. <laughs> the best way to store juice is simply not to store the juice. Yes, you heard me right. I said the best way to store the juice is to not store the juice. You want to bring your juicer and the produce with you wherever you will be so that you can juice it fresh. I will talk more about this in a minute. But nonetheless, if you do have to go to work every day, you know, buy an extra juicer, a small juicer to use in your break room to make your juice fresh. It's really important, in my opinion, that we consume our juices as fresh as possible. And this is for a few reasons. Uh, basically, once you break open the cell walls of the produce, whether you're juicing a carrot or a leafy greens or a lemon cucumbers, like we're going to juice in a second, what happens is the fibrous cell walls are broken into and ruptured and then all the nutrients, including the liquid, come out. And that's what the juicers do. They separate the fiber from the juice and it's the juice that feeds you because our bodies can only absorb things in a liquid state. But the problem with that is that most people don't use their teeth enough to chew their food into a liquid state. So that's where a juicer can be quite beneficial in my opinion. The problem arises when as soon as you break open the fibrous cell walls, the juice is given off, the juice starts to oxidize. So I mean, a uh, kind of similar example if you like cut yourself, you would start to bleed and you couldn't just bleed forever and your blood will start to actually dry and get like hard and crusty, you know, and form a scab. Well, your juice isn't going to scab over, but what your juice is going to do, like your blood when it comes in contact with oxygen, is that it actually starts to oxidize. So when the juice starts to oxidize, what's happening is the nutrition is slowly going down. So for that reason, especially if you are into healing or want to get the maximum benefit, then I would say juice it and drink it before you lose it, before you lose all the nutrition. That being said, you can store your juices and in my opinion, stored juices you know that you make in your own juicer are much better than drinking a coffee or a soda things like that that you may otherwise drink so I always like to look at life in terms of good better best best of course is to always make your juice and drink it as soon as possible better maybe you know uh, make your juice in the morning and then drink it you know within eight hours and maybe better would be you know make your juice and drink it within 24 hours and there's definitely ways and juicers and other tips that I will provide for you in this video to explain how to do it the best way you possibly can. I consider myself an expert in juicers. I've been around the world visiting juicer factories and I'm involved with juicing every single day of my life. So these are my tips that I've learned over the many years that I've been into juicing. So uh, number one, the most important tip that I have learned is you want to start with the highest quality produce that has the highest nutrient content to begin with. So what does that mean? Buy organic produce at the Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck supermarket? No, no, no. What that means is you want to try to grow it yourself if at all possible. Food that you grew in your own soil and you control the conditions like building the soil including compost and rock dust minerals which add the trace minerals in the soil because they are deficient in standard topsoils and even organic growers don't add the rock dust or the trace minerals back into the soil. So anyways, if you grow your own, then you're going to go outside, harvest it, and come inside and juice it. Because what a lot of people don't tell you is that once produce is harvested and then shipped across country, hydro-cooled and all this stuff, and then you buy it, it could be a week or even you know months old, depending if it's like apples. Apples could be several months old because they're stored in a cold storage in an oxygen deprived environment. How long would you last in an oxygen deprived environment? And so the nutrition over time goes down. I have seen some studies that show up to 50% of certain nutrients can be lost within just 24 hours of harvesting. So it's very important to grow yourself. Now if you can't grow it yourself, the second best is go to a farmer's market, a local farmer's market, where the farmers hopefully at the market are growing the produce themselves 
picking it the morning of or the day before and then selling it to you and then you could come right home and juice it. So I have noticed in my own personal garden when I grow my own produce grown in compost and rock dust that has high nutritional content in my foods, my foods after I pick them last really long. Actually I have a pepper sitting in a bowl behind the camera there that I picked a month ago. And I mean it hasn't rotted, it hasn't molded. Sure, it's getting a little bit dry, but it's perfectly fine to eat and it's actually ripening up. So, higher quality produce doesn't tend to degrade as fast. So, I could also make the hypothesis that higher quality produce, when it's juiced, won't degrade as fast either. Because it's all the vitamins and minerals and trace minerals and phytochemicals in the plant that helps protect it from all the external elements, including oxidation. So besides starting with the highest quality produce you could start with, another factor when juicing the produce is actually the juicer itself. So our, once again, there are good, better, best juicers for juicing in. Uh, for example, we have a centrifugal ejection juicer over on this side, and the centrifugal ejection juicers run at a very high speed. And in general, the higher the speed of the juicer, the worse off the juice is going to be for saving. So the higher the speed of the juicer, that means the less nutrition that you're going to have in the juice once you get it, and then it's not going to save as well as a machine that runs low RPM or slower. So right next to it, we have the Omega Vert 330 HD, and this is the juicer that I'll be using today, and this would probably be about middle of the road. It runs at a low 80 RPMs, and the manufacturers claim that you can store the juice up to 72 hours with it. Probably after this, probably the best juicer to store your juice uh, that we offer at Discount Juicers would be the Green Star Elite GSE 5000. That runs at a low RPM, plus in addition has bio, ceramic, and far infrared technology built into the gears that they have done studies with that I have read with my own two eyes that show you can save the juice for up to 72 hours. Now, just because the company says you can store the juice up to 72 hours, does that mean you should do it? No, 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 and that's because certain nutrients can still be lost, you know, within minutes of after creating the juice, no matter what juicer you have. So for the highest benefit, I would drink the juice as soon as you make it. That being said, if you do want to store the juice, then one of the lower RPM juicers, you know, would definitely be best. And guess what? The ability to store the juice the best is only one factor when selecting a juicer. So while the Green Star Elite is probably excels and it's near the top of the list at storing your juices, it does take a little bit longer to clean and you know while it does juice things like carrots quite well, if you're trying to do straight wheatgrass or straight leafy greens, it tends to foam a little bit and then you would maybe want to get a different kind of juicer. I'm not going to cover all the different variations on what juicer is the best one for you, but be sure to check my other videos on YouTube where I have over 250 videos that explain and show and compare the different juicers that may best fit your needs. Today we're concentrating specifically on storing your juices. After produce selection and getting the highest quality produce and then after selecting the juicer and getting the best juicer that's going to be able to store your juice if that is in fact a criteria for you, the next step is actually the containers you're going to store the juice in. So uh, you can see here we have several different glass containers. I just got some uh, glass water bottles that I buy the water in, bottled water, when I'm traveling, when I'm not around the house. And uh, I like to only purchase uh, bottled water in glass because plastic can leach. And if you're storing water or your fresh juices in plastic, it can leach things out. So I don't recommend that. I recommend always storing your juices in glass. So you could either use glass water bottles. If you happen to drink wine, you could save your wine bottles or other liqueur bottles and refill those with your fresh juices. Uh, another thing you could use is like a stainless steel um, bottle like this. The stainless steel is nice because it uh, stays pretty cold. It uh, holds the coldness and will let it out. And finally, we have the uh, mason jar. You can always store your juices in a glass mason jar. These are fairly inexpensive. Uh, many Walmarts do carry these. You can buy a case of them. If you're going to go on a juice fast, they're pretty easy and convenient. And they're also easy to clean. You know, I've noticed, especially when you get a little bit of uh, pulp in the juice, the pulp will stick onto the inside of the glass. And one of these bottles, uh, actually very uh, challenging to clean unless you have a special bottle brush to clean out the inside if you don't clean it right after or keep it moist on the inside. Uh, something like this with a mason jar, a lot easier to keep clean. You know, you can almost get your hand in there and a sponge or a dish brush to 
clean it out after you're done. But now that we talked about the different bottles you can use, and once again to sum that up, I recommend using a glass bottle. Even better than just a glass bottle, you might want to use one that's kind of tinted, so a darker glass, because a darker glass is not going to let the light in, and the light may also negatively impact the juice quality by, you know, breaking it down once it's juiced. So with that, what we're going to do next is we're going to get set up, and we're going to actually juice today some lemon cucumbers and some tree collars to juice, to make a juice, and then we're going to go ahead and show you guys how I store that the best way possible in the bottle. Now I'm ready to start juicing in the Omega Bird Juicer and then I'll show you the best way to store your juice. But first let me go ahead and introduce what I will be juicing today. So first we're going to juice some cucumbers. So you can see here I have some almost standard looking cucumbers but these are not the standard looking cucumbers. These are actually called Japanese cucumbers or Asian cucumbers. Now I like juicing the Asian cucumbers because these guys don't have that bitter or funky skin. You know when you eat the skin of a cucumber it kind of makes your I don't know, your tongue kind of weird. These ones don't do that. So we have two of these just to show you guys like a standard type cucumber. But the other kind I really like a lot more than even the Japanese ones are these guys. And these guys are called lemon cucumbers. And you guys may have never seen these before. No, they're not lemons. These are lemon cucumbers because they look similar to a lemon, the shape of a lemon. But yes, these are actually a cucumber. These are kind of like a cucumber shape, like an egg type shape and uh, or they could also be round and these guys actually have no bitterness and actually I could like eat these mmm just like an apple wow that one's particularly sweet I'd say these are maybe as sweet as like a Granny Smith apple but no tartness so that's what we're gonna be juicing today we're gonna be juicing these cucumbers here along with some fresh picked nutrient dense tree collards from my garden that was grown in compost and rock dust so always the first thing you need to do is properly prepare your produce and I'm not even going to talk about produce selection of course you want to get the highest quality and freshest picked produce as possible like we talked about earlier these ones were just picked out of my garden and these ones were picked just a few days ago from the farm where I, it was a you pick farm where I picked them myself so the first thing to process the produce is on the especially on the leafy greens when juicing the Omega Vert you need to pre-cut them up or else they will clog up and jam the machine I do have several other good videos on YouTube. Do a search for Omega Vert Best Practices on YouTube and you'll be sure to find that video. So the simple way to do that is you're just going to take the whole bunch of greens, uh, stack them up on top of each other, and what I like to do is then I just roll it up. Once I got it into a nice fat roll, then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take my knife. I'm going to go down the line and just, and just cut it into little small shreds. Now it's really important to do this with leafy greens or things like celery that have fibrous stalks. Uh, those strings are what's going to clog up the outlet port on the Omega Vert. When that happens, you're going to get excessive amounts of fiber in your juice, and also your machine may be more difficult to take apart, and then it's also not going to yield as much either because it's not working properly. So very important to use the machine properly, and actually unfortunately that's not explained in the instruction manual. So you have to refer to my videos to find out the proper techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this up real quick and we'll come back at you once I got this all prepared. I'm just finishing up cutting up these uh, tree collards and uh, right now I'm actually working on cutting up the stems. And yes, you can juice the stems. Actually, the juice of the stems is actually quite good. But the main thing that's really important on the stems is that you do need to pre-cut them before putting them in the vert because they are very uh, stringy and fibrous. Another thing you can do if you like to eat your kale, you could eat the kale and like peel off all the leaf and then save your stems to juice at a later date. Just be sure to pre-cut them like I'm doing now. Now I got all the collards chopped up. The next thing I'll probably do as I'm juicing is chop up uh, the cucumbers to fit down the feed chute. Basically we're going to have to cut up each cucumber in half and we're then going to rotate the produce. We're going to put a handful of the collards in and then, you know, like a cucumber or a couple cucumbers and then put some more collards. Uh, by rotating the different items going into the machine, it's going to allow the machine to extract the juice and push out that pulp much easier. Now, speaking about pulp, uh, that's the next thing I want to talk about. When juicing for storage, it may be very important to actually leave some fiber in the juice. So whether you have an Omega Vert, which puts out some of the most fiber or pulp in the juice, that actually may be a good thing if you want to store your juice. I have seen studies that show that when you store juice with some fiber in it, it actually lasts longer and stay preserves longer because some of the 
constituents of the fiber somehow protects the nutrients in the juice from oxidizing. I personally don't want to do that today. I'm going to probably drink my juice relatively soon after I make it. Um, you know, in my opinion, I only store juices when I absolutely need to. You know, so if I'm on the road or I can't make my juice fresh, I would actually rather just bring the juicer with me. But if that's totally not possible, I will make and store the juice like I'm showing you today and store it for up to eight hours. Now, some manufacturers claim you can do it up to 72 hours. I like to, you know, uh, you know, get a higher quality juice and I'll store it for up to eight hours. Although that being said, in extreme conditions, there have been times when I'll drink a juice after 24 hours, but in most cases after that, I'll give it to a friend or something. And there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just really particular like that. You can literally taste the difference. If you make the juice now and drink it, you'll taste how it tastes. Leave that juice out on your counter for about four hours and then taste it. I will tell you, it'll taste totally different. And to you, it may not taste as good. My taste buds are quite attuned to these things and things that have been stored too long, it just doesn't taste good to me anymore. Because I don't want fiber in my juice, I'm gonna go ahead and use a uh, sieve to strain out the pulp after it comes out of the Omega Vert. And I am using a Anchor Hawking four cup measuring cup um, glass to uh, have the juice go into that's gonna fall through this uh, sieve before it goes in there. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start juicing in the Omega Vert. We'll turn this on. Now once again, the Omega Vert is a slow juicer. It runs at 80 RPMs. As you can see, we just put a bunch of the uh, tree collard stalks in there. Next, we're gonna dump in a piece of the uh, cucumber. Get a couple cucumbers pre-cut here and drop those in. Now we're gonna do a little bit of the leaves. It's very important in the Omega Vert to rotate the items you're putting through the machine. The other thing that's very important is you need to just not keep clogging stuff down the chute as fast as you can get it in there. Give the machine some time to work and extract the juice before you're putting more stuff in. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and continue juicing and when I'm done juicing I'll come back at you to show you how to properly store the juice and also share some more tips about storing juices and why it may not be such a good idea to store your juices in my opinion. So we're just about done juicing in the Omega Vert juicer. We've got the last half of lemon cucumber in here we're gonna go ahead and put through. As you can see I created a virtually, uh, I don't know, about seven cups of juice just with a little produce that I had. I let the Omega Vert, it's actually a fairly efficient juicer. We're gonna let this run for a second and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn it off and I'm gonna show you guys how to store the juice. All right, so I think that'll do it. Now the first way to store the juice is the easiest way. Once again, like many things in life, there's always good, better, best. Like the best way I'll sh show you how to store the juice is just in a little bit. And here's the uh, better way. We're gonna move up, go ahead and move this cutting board out the way. We're gonna take our little plate here. What you're gonna do if you don't have a special tool that I'll show you in a minute, you can just simply take your juice and you're just gonna pour it into the jar. Now once again I like to use a glass jar. You could also do this with a thermos. You can see the consistency of the juice. It's nice and very thin, not too much pulp. And what you're going to do is you're literally going to keep filling it, keep filling it, keep filling it, keep filling it, until it starts dripping over the top. So you're literally going to fill it to the brim. And once you've got it filled to the brim, then you're going to take your uh, lid of your jar and put it on. And it's all right because it's going to overflow when you're putting on your lid and this is actually what you want. So you can do this over the sink or I'm doing it over a plate today. Now what you're doing in this way is that you're going to minimize the amount of air space in the glass jar or whatever container you're putting your juice in. This is very important because any air that's in there is going to cause the juice to oxidize. So you want to minimize the amount of oxidation by removing all the extra air in there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this in the fridge and keep it quite cold. Very important to preserve your juice is to keep it cold in a fridge. Now some people say, hey John, if the fridge is good, is the freezer better? Well, you know, I would prefer that you don't freeze your juices because when you freeze your juices, and especially when it comes solid cold, it, you know, drops in a really cold temperature that will cause it to freeze. And when you freeze things, some of the nutrients are degraded and may be lost. Of course, you know, good, better, best. If you if the options are frozen, thawed out juice versus, you know, a Coca-Cola or a coffee, then guess what? I don't have to tell you guys which is better, your frozen, thawed out juice. That being said, 
you want to drink the juice as soon as you can after you make it. So this is one method right here. Now the next way I'm going to show you is the best way that I know how to save your juice. We're going to go ahead and use like an amber bottle so the light can't get in there. We're going to go ahead and move this out of the way. We're going to go ahead and take this cap off. What you'll need is a funnel. So I have a funnel here and I like to use a, you know, a stainless steel funnel versus a glass funnel. And that's actually a nice tight fit there. The next thing I like to do is I like to double strain my juice because I don't want any fiber in my juice. Now once again, that is a preference thing. Some people like the fiber, some people don't. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to potentially store better, keep some fiber in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take some of the fiber out. We're going to go ahead and use this uh, pitcher of juice here. And we're going to go ahead and use this strainer and just uh, pour it in. And there is some fiber getting caught in the strainer. That's completely fine. I think we're about we're about full enough. We got almost up to the brim. If you go too much, it kind of bubbles over, and that's not too good. We're gonna go ahead and remove our funnel. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to have to purchase a special item. Now this is basically a vacuum sealer. And uh, what I have today is actually this guy, it's actually called the Houdini Wine Preserver. It's a vacuum pump with two stoppers. They also make another one, uh, I think it's called a VinVac. You could probably get it on Amazon or some other place. But this one I got because it was available at Target and there's Target stores across the whole nation. So you should be able to find this near you. We're going to go ahead and open this guy up. And what you're going to do is you're just going to simply take out one of these guys, one of these special plugs. You're going to pop that in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this little tool here. This is like a little vacuum tool. You're going to go in there and pump. And what this is going to do, this is going to pump all the air out and put this under vacuum. Now, when it is under vacuum, it can't oxidize because there's no air in there. Just like when we overfilled it, there's no air or a little air. This is even the best way to do it. So we're sucking it out, and we even started sucking some juice, so that's definitely good. And when you open this, it's going to pop like, you know, when you open an old coffee can or something and it's under the vacuum. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and store this in the fridge and, you know, it'll be all ready to drink when we need it. Now, even under storing this condition, I would only store my juices for up to 24 hours and would recommend you only store your juices for up to 24 hours max. Although with some juicers, you can store them for up to 72. That being said, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's best not to store your juices at all, but it also depends on... You know, if you're going to go for that coffee or soda or even pasteurized bottled juices at work, well then definitely a fresh juice you made at home that's stored for 24 hours, in my opinion, is going to have a lot higher nutrition, especially if you're growing the produce yourself. So the last thing I want to touch upon is I want to talk a little bit more about why juices may not be beneficial and as effective, especially in uh, healing, if they've been stored. So uh, the juice man, or Jay Cordich, who actually is, got me into juicing big time, um, was working with Dr. Garnett Cheney at Stanford Hospital healing people with ulcers by feeding them cabbage juice. And they learned that if you fed the patients the cabbage juice that was even stored for, you know, 15 minutes, you know, it was too long and the patients didn't get the healing. So if you want the absolute highest quality and the most nutrition in the juice, then it'd be best to drink it as soon as possible and not store it under any conditions. Why would the juices not have the beneficial effects if you waited too long to juice them? And that's because once you start breaking open the cell walls, things start to oxidize. So whether it's the enzymes start to dissipate or whether some of the vitamins uh, start to dissipate because of the oxygen or whether because some of the life force energy in the food starts to dissipate. I mean, life force energy called chi in Chinese, hado in Japan, um, biophotons in Germany or prana in a, the Indian language you know what this means is it, it's like the energy in the food that is then transferred to you once food has been packaged and processed that energy is diminished so it's my goal to eat all the highest quality and the most energetic foods as possible so that I'll have the most energy to do with whatever I please whether my body needs to heal or whether I want to go out and run a marathon so that might be another aspect of what degrades over time after you make the juice. Another thing that is probably more important in my opinion than those two on some levels are the phytonutrients in the juice. 
Now those aren't your standard vitamins and minerals. Those are the things like the lycopenes and all these other nutrients that give the juice their vibrant color. So those also may degrade over time once you expose them to the air and you break open the cell walls from juicing. The last thing I want to touch upon before I go is that certain produce items or certain fruits and vegetables, uh, their juices will store better than others. So for example, on uh, lemons and citrus fruits, it has naturally occurring citric acid. And citric acid is actually used as a preservative in many foods that you still may be eating. So by juicing just 100% oranges or 100% lemons or 100% citrus, those juices will store for you know longer periods of time without as much degradation as something as a green juice. So the green juices are probably at the opposite end of the spectrum. You know those should probably be juiced, juiced and drank most immediately, whereas the citrus is probably you know better stored. Something like apples are probably you know not quite as best stored either because once you start to juice the apple, you'll notice it'll turn like a light brown as it's coming out of the juicer. And if you store it even a little while on your countertop, you'll see it'll turn actually much darker brown. Now that's an immediate sign of oxidation that you can't see. All juices will do this. So if you make a juice fresh and store some under a vacuum like this and store some in an open glass in your fridge, you'll see the differences in the color and that's the oxidation occurring and that's when you're losing some of the nutrition. So some of the better vegetables to juice that would store better, in my opinion, would be something like carrots. Carrots with all its beta carotene content would store better than, you know, the leafy greens, for example. So you'd want to make a juice that's pretty rich in carrots, maybe some cucumbers too, it'd probably store pretty good, and not a whole lot of greens. Or just do a lot of fruit juices. Fruit juices in general tend to store a little bit better. The other thing you can do is use the citric acid to your advantage. So when you're juicing a green juice, add a bunch of lemon to it. So then you have like a lemony, uh, you know, green juice. And that'll be good because the lemon will actually put in the citric acid into the uh, greens, which may allow and help your juice stay fresher and keep more of its nutrition longer. With those tips, hopefully now you'll better know how to store your juices. But once again, I want to reiterate, it's best not to store your juices unless you absolutely have to. But if you do, you now have all the tips and tricks at your disposal so that you can drink the highest quality juice ever because any juice you make with your own juice extractor at home will always be better than any pasteurized and bottled juices from the store. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.